Our next topic in operating system is related to protection and file system structure. Now, you have the data and where is that data till now we were speaking about where it is stored, it is stored onto your files. Now, you want this data to be protected. So, when I say the data to be protected, one is related to your physical damage. Uh, date. Because of physical damage, your data may be lost. And for that so physical damage, you go for using a reliability option. So what is a reliability option here? You go for maintaining a duplicate copies of the same data. The other damage that can be done to your data is unauthorized access. So user, you want to protect your data from unauthorized access. For that, we go for using a technique known as protection. So this topic is totally related to how do you actually protect the data from unauthorized access. For that, first of all, we need to know the type of access that can be provided on a file. You can perform a read operation, you can perform a write operation, you can execute a file, you can append the data to the exist, uh, existing file, you can delete the data, or you can just list the contents or the attributes of the file. That is related to the types of access. So when you go for that type of access here, uh, we have to know an access control list. So what is an access control list? You will be given the list of users, user 1 and user 2 and these are your files. So you have to know what type of an access, the what type of access the user can perform on this particular file. So user 1 can only read and write uh, on file 1. User 2 can go for read, write and execute and user 1 can go for read, write and execute permissions and he has even the owner permissions he can go for read and print now when you go for the main reason of your access control list is you want to protect your data from unauthorized access so the user tries to access some particular file one so user one tries to access file one and what is the type of access he wants to do he wants to go for read operation so the operating system will first get the access control list checks the operation whether the user 1 can perform a read operation on the file 1. If it is specified in ACL, the user can be allowed to perform the same operation. Now, let us take a case where the user 1 wants to perform an execute operation on file 1. So, what does the operating system do? It goes to the ACL, checks whether user 1 can perform execute operation. So, he is not allowed to do so, this particular operation cannot be done by user 1 on that particular file. The only thing we need to take care of this is, first of all, you have to construct a list. So, you have to mention all the users. Uh, if you have multiple users or thousands of users related to a company, so you have to maintain the user list and the type of access. To overcome that particular problem, where we have what is done is, the users were divided based on the authorities or based on the operations you can perform rather than writing user 1 user 2 and user 3 for all the users will give them the name to the user the so first user can be the owner so we have different types of users one is the owner the person who has actually created the file or the directory in the system a group assume if two or three people are collaboratively working on a same project so they want to maintain a single file so that can be called as a group and you have any other other than the owner and the group you can have anybody else which we call them as others or we can even use the term universe or in some of the operating system we can even call them as guest so the permissions that are given to your guest so others universe guest nothing but the type, third type of users look uh, when you go for unix operating system as we have seen, we have three types of users, owner, and here is nothing but your group, and this is your others. And what all uh, type of access a user can perform, the user can read, the user can write, the user can execute. R for read, W for write, and X for execute. When you go for denoting them in a binary form, if I'm representing three values, R, W, X value with 0, 0, 0, it means that the user cannot perform any operation. And if I'm representing 1 in place of RWX is my representation, if I write it as 001, it means that X is for execute. So, you want to perform execute operation. What is the corresponding octal value of it is same 001 and the binary value of it would be 1. 
zero one zero so when you keep one in place of w that means the user can perform write operation depending on the bit change you are given different types of permission so when a user want to read perform read operation the binary value of would would be one zero zero and what is the decimal value related to one zero zero it is nothing but four and when the user wants to perform a write operation the write value would be zero one zero the user can perform a write operation and the corresponding binary value is 2 and if the user wants to perform execute operation the binary value is 001 and the corresponding decimal value is 1 so 1 is for execute so now for a particular owner if you want to give all the three operations read write and execute what is the decimal value of read 4 write value is 2 and execute value is 1 when i sum up all these values you get a decimal value as 7 so if you are representing a value 7 against the owner it means that the owner can perform read operation write operation as well as the execute operation now when i go for the group here i've just indicated r and w and i've not specified anything under the execute operation it means that you want to you doesn't want to give any permission for execute so what are the decimal values of it 4 and 2 where the decimal sorry 4 and 2 the sum of it would be 6. So when you sum up all these values 7, 6, 5 would be the permission given to the owner a group and the other. So owner can perform all the operations whereas the group can perform only read and write and when I go for the others other can only go for read and execute operation so this is how in Unix operating system we mention the values against the owner group and the others read write and execute indicates the type of faxes owner group and others indicates the type of users or different types of users who will be accessing the file when you just see the snapshot of this particular protection in your Unix operating system when you go for this D, the first letter D here indicates that this particular file, whatever may be the name of the file, here it is private. It indicates that this is nothing but your directory. So, this indicates it is a directory. And without specifying D, if you are just having an empty space with an hyphen here, it indicates that it is a file. So, you need to have a differentiation between which one is a directory and which one is a file. For directory, the letter is D and file, it is nothing but an empty hyphen. And this indicates that RWX are nothing but read, write and execute operations which you are providing for the owner and you are not providing any operations for your group or your others. So depending on the operation, we can just depict them as it is. Now when I go for Windows operating system, so for guests you don't want to give any operation. So it is not command enabled, right? It is a GUI enabled. So you can just click on the guest and you can go for denying all the permissions. You cannot perform any of the operation. This is how you will protect the data in Unix operating system and Windows operating system. Other than the type of access and the access control list, whatever we have seen, we have some other approaches where I can provide password to my files. But what is the problem if you have a more number of files for each of the file I need to maintain a different password and it becomes tedious for the user to remember the number of passwords. So as the number of files increases, the number of passwords that are to be maintained will also increase because you want them to be unique. And to overcome this problem, I assume I go for only one password for all the files. What if a part unauthorized user is able to identify this password? All the files he will be able to access the data. And here in password, you can just associate a password directory can be provided to only a single password. So when I say a directory, it is a folder which is a collection of files. So individually to each and every file, you need not provide the password. The total folder password can be provided. Now coming to the having seen how the data can be protected, we'll see how the data can be organized in a file. So that it comes under your file system structure. So this will enable the user to identify how to actually organize the data or you store the data. So here in file system structure, we go for using a layered approach. So in the layered approach, at the bottom level, we have the hardware devices. 
to which we can contact and the next level would be your input output control these are nothing but your device drivers which will help you to interact with the devices now if you want to perform an operation on the keyboard so you just type the letter from the keyboard and the corresponding action will be taken by the device so that type of interfaces will be provided in input output control and this input output control will receive the command from the basic file system so it receives the command from your basic file system file, coming to your file organization module here file organization module will be dealing with as we have seen in your previous case about your logical and physical address here also we have logical blocks and the physical blocks so how you actually store the data in the logical blocks and how you map the data onto your physical blocks will be taken care by file organization module which will take the input from your logical file system and here when you go for basic file system this basic file system even takes care of how you store the data in your main memory and how you store your data in your cache memory a file organization will be dealing with your logical and your physical uh, blocks and how to interrelate it and this logical file system will deal with your actual metadata of the file what do you mean by the metadata of the file metadata of the file is nothing but it tell you what is the size of your file what is the type of your file who is the owner of the file at what time your file was modified so the data related about the data so metadata is data about the data so what is the data here data about the file is nothing but your metadata here which will be maintained in a logical file system and to perform all these operations you require an interface or a user interface that is done by means of an application programs so generally this is the approach which we will be using in any of the file systems advantage of your layered uh, file system is nothing but you know that what you divide the work among different layers so duplication of the code is minimized so each layer performs a different functionality so the code will be different for each of the layers and if you are modifying one layer it will not be reflected to the other layer but the disadvantage here is when you increase the complexity when you want a system to be scalable you can increase the number of layers so as you go on increasing the number of layers the functionality to be added to each of the layer will also increase which results in the decrease of the performance and in most of the unix file system now we are using file allocation table fat32 these are the nothing but different file system architectures or file system structures which are being used in different operating system and coming to your google we will be now we are now using our own distributed file system so file system structure will generally tell you how to organize your data uh, we'll be moving on to the next topic in the next class